Uh, Representative, I'm looking at the roll call here on the amendment, and uh, I mean this, this measure is going to pass. Uh, you anticipated passing, correct? That will be up to the people in this chamber and, you know, how they choose to decide the fate of our state this afternoon. Well, presuming, we'll just presume that they're going to do this. When this gets to the governor's desk and he vetoes it, are you going to move to override that veto? Mr. Breen, my job here today is to explain what's in this bill, to advocate for its passage, and to try to save the state of Illinois from a, a cataclysmic disaster. Well, so you're saying that you're not going to move to override the veto when it comes I, back? If Mr. the state Breen, is going I, to explode I, without this in law? Mr. Breen, I am not talking about anything today other than the passage of this bill. We will wait for the governor to make his decision when it arrives uh, on his desk. But you have said that if this doesn't go into law as soon as humanly possible, the state collapses. I would urge him to sign it. If he doesn't, if 25,000 workers are in fact laid off from our public transportation areas, if 36,000 seniors lose services, if the folks who well, are and, suffering and, and Greg, from you're, cancer you're not answering and the question, you're not going off into something else. And just to be clear, this bill requires a veto-proof majority to get out of this chamber and out of the Senate, correct? I believe those are the correct numbers. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Speaker, to the bill. Today, middle-income taxpayers ta pay the highest combined income, sales, and property taxes in the country. Today, we are 50th worst in property taxes, 27th worst in sales taxes, and 30th worst in income taxes. Today, when you include all 50 states in the District of Columbia, we are the absolute worst. That's 51st in the country for tax burden on middle income families today. Should we, well, when this chamber sends the income tax out, uh, if it does go into law, our income tax rating would go from 30th the worst in the country down to somewhere between 46th to 48th worst in the country. As a practical matter, that means that a, a, someone with a full-time job is going to have to work an extra three days uh, next year, this starting July 1st to yesterday, have to work an extra three days just to bring home the same amount of money that they were bringing home before. Now, for the people of the state of Illinois who are paying too much in property taxes, there's no relief here. For working folks, there's no relief here. There's no reform here for our bloated state government. There's no cleaning up our corrupt politics. There's no sign that anything is going to change in Springfield. With all due deference, who in their right mind would agree to send more money to the state government of the state of Illinois? Now, let's be clear. I, I understand that there are Republican members who are planning to vote for this measure. The public universities they represent are crumbling. The service providers in their districts are going bankrupt. Government workers in their districts are worried about their jobs. And those members feel they have no choice, and that is certainly understandable. But let's remember why we are here today this is essentially a blackmail budget. We are here today because reform negotiations, which we're continuing in good faith, are now being cut off because there's nothing more these folks can do. They have to act because of their feeling about their districts. Ladies and gentlemen, there are reforms that can be negotiated. We can get back to the table. We can fix this impasse but this is not the right way to do it. Please vote no.